Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Matthew Broughton. The bomber is now identified as Mark Anthony Condit. Police reported that Condit died after a bomb detonated in his car this morning, right as police tracked him down. Even though he is now considered to not be a threat, police are warning the community to still be on high alert in case other packages were sent throughout the community. We now know more about the students involved in yesterday's high school shooting in Sutherland, Maryland. The shooter is identified as Austin Wyatt Rollins, a student who once had a relationship with the girl who was shot. She's in critical condition. With over 27,000 passengers a day, the Las Vegas monorail provides rides all around the Las Vegas Strip. Built in 1993, originally as the Las Vegas Tram, the monorail operates electrically with no driver, 20 hours a day. Well, I think since it's Las Vegas, probably getting it better would be safer for everybody as well. So, and it's really good. The hours are pretty good, but now I'm thinking more of 24 hours a day versus no, no, no. Tickets for the monorail are available for purchase in single, 24, and even three-day unlimited rides, both in person and online. With over seven stops going north and south on the Las Vegas trip, getting a monorail is pretty simple. I use one of these right here, which is a monorail class. This incident is a chicken, paper taco, and you walk up through the gates and you're on your way. Along with local passengers, monorail workers say the service provides more than just a quick ride. Talk to people. I enjoy that, <laughs> especially because I don't travel as much, so it's always nice to see where people are from, what made them want to come out here and to go anywhere else, so I like it. Even visitors say the transportation is a unique and affordable experience. Uh, yes, yes. And you're talking like yeah. 7 or $8 a ride minimum. You just get one ticket and you're good to go for three or four days. With support from locals and tourists, the Las Vegas monorail will continue to win on the house. Matthew Broughton, Fresno State Focus. Thank you so much, Jamison. I know it's kind of chilly out there, so hopefully you are staying warm. We do want to cover and uh, continue our coverage with the ASI elections with ASI officer Travis Childress, who is here to talk about the new bold new initiative. Thanks for being here, Travis. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So, Travis, you've been involved with ASI for a couple of years now, and you do a lot of different positions. Can you tell me about those positions? Uh, so, first off, I'm the senator of Greek affairs, uh, which means I represent all of the Greek students here on campus. Um, second of all, I'm the chief justice of the student court, so if anybody is... Um, is not following the rules in the election, then of course we hear them at the court. Now, what made you want to get involved with ASI? Well, I was involved in student government before I transferred from Fresno City College, so I wanted to continue that service to the student population as an ASI uh, member at Fresno State. And I'm sure ASI is really excited right now because mm -hmm. elections are going on right now. And Definitely. there is the Bold New You initiative that was actually on the ballot last year, didn't pass, but it's on the ballot this year. Can you tell me why that it's on the ballot this year? Well, uh, so the members in ASI thought that the students needed a uh, new fresh look at the new student union. So they decided to put it on the referendum because it is uh, substantially uh, different. The fee has been decreased and the decision making has been done by students this year instead of mainly faculty and staff. Now, if it were to pass, mm -hmm. it would be an increase in tuition about $149 and about five years or so, it's about 2022. 2023 about mm -hmm. about completion, correct? Definitely, correct. And what kind of, you know, briefly, what are the pros and the cons of building the university student union? So the pros uh, are that we have currently outgrown our student union. It was built for a campus of about 11,000, and of course we have more than doubled that size to date. Um, and the cons, of course, are that uh, students don't want to have an increase in tuition or increase in fees whatsoever. Um, so that, those are the two competing arguments. Well, thank you so much, Travis. I appreciate you. you being here, the valuable information that you show, and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having Thanks. me. We've been speaking with ASI officer Travis Childress. Remember, there is still time to vote. You can vote either in person or online tonight and tomorrow by noon. So, viewers, what do you get when you mix food, music, and some drag queens? Well, B-I-N-G-O or bingo, of course. The first annual drag queen bingo event happened in Visalia over the past weekend. People played bingo, earned raffle tickets, and even had snacks and watched live drag performances. For event host Priscilla McNamara, this event is something long awaited. It being the first drag queen bingo here in Visalia, I must say it was a good turnout for being what it was. And I'm so glad we not only got people from Visalia to join the party, but we also got Fresno, we got Bakersfield, we got, you know, those other cities, surrounding cities that really can't or won't have the opportunity to experience that. They were able to join us and, you know, definitely making it a party. McNamara says the party will continue next year as the event plans to come back to the South Valley. 
So continuing on this drag queen themed colorful segment, many performers give back to their fans through charity or through awareness. Here in Fresno, four local performers are using their talent to help children find a comfort level with books. Paul Hernandez, Joseph Maciel, and Willie Redman are getting ready for a special day. They're drag performers, and today is Drag Queen Story Hour, an event aimed at educating children. This is something for Redman, also known as Deja Sky, that he feels is raising awareness. Well, first and foremost, we are doing this for the community. We're not doing it out of personal gain. We're literally doing it out of the kindness of our own hearts. At the end of the day, we're sitting down and reading a book to a child. That's all it is, no more, no less. In its second year, Drag Queen Story Hour is bringing those children and their families to Bitwise Industries. With over 100 adults and children here at Drag Queen Story Hour, people are not only learning about the drag queens themselves, they're also learning about a common space. And that common space is reading. A reading event like this is extremely important for parent Tracy Cisneros and her daughter Audrey. My daughter walks around being an advocate for anyone who needs one. She is the stand-up girl. If you don't have a friend, she goes to be your friend. That's my kid. And it's because of stuff like this. And stuff like this, from the Queens to the location, is only made possible because of Samaritans like Justin Kamimoto. So we chose drag queens that really are known as the community queens, the ones that have a good reputation in the community and the ones that really are giving back in such a unique way. All of the ones that we got here today are kid friendly, uh, they know how to interact and engage with families and they know how to camp it up in a kid friendly version way. And in this friendly story, there is something we all learn. Don't be a drag, just be a queen. <laughs> 